The baseball season is underway, and we are grateful for that because, uh, you know, spring training runs on a little too long for everybody unless you're a pitcher trying to get your pitches in. And so uh, your takeaways from game one, Toronto Blue Jays and, and the Baltimore Orioles, uh, it's one. There's 161 to go. And there were a lot of positives for the Blue Jays despite the loss. There were. And, and I, I do think we certainly saw yesterday the, the Edwin Encarnacion swing, if you will. I mean, obviously, he, he hits a big home run for the Indians in, in the eighth inning to really help them win that ball game. And, and, and the Jays, I believe, they're three through six hitters were combined 0 for 17. So uh, I think his absence was certainly felt by the Jays, and, and his presence w- was an obvious uh, benefit to Cleveland. But I, I think you look at the way that the pitching uh, was there, Elliot, yesterday for, for the Jays, and it was very solid outing really from beginning to end. I mean, Grilly just hung one, one uh, breaking ball too many to Trumbo. But I, I do think, and I know we talked about it last week, um, th- th- that we're still seeing a bit of that, adjustment phase for the Jays lineup. I still think it's it's a well above average lineup that's going to hit, no question about that. But I, I do believe we're seeing um, some of that period of, okay, you've lost Edwin, you've got Morales coming in, Bautista, I think, stranded eight runners yesterday. Um, the, the tie-in that Donaldson missed, and I know Donaldson was, was fine yesterday. He had some very good at-bats. Uh, but I, I think they're just still finding their way a little bit collectively as a group. And for a long time, th- those at-bats, uh, when you saw the way that Bautista and, and Edwin uh, functioned so well together and Donaldson was in that mix as well and Tulo, there, there was a really good rhythm there. And I think it's just going to take some time for what I believe is still going to be a very good lineup to find their way now early in the season. I mentioned earlier, John, that uh, some people like the, uh, the, the, the quote or the, uh, the proverb almost, you can't win, you can't make the playoffs in April, but you can knock yourself out. And no one's expecting, like it, 2013 was so much promise for the Jays and they started 9-17. and 17. That in the AL East is a lot to work back from. What is the point where you look and go, I got a good sense of the season. Now it's not just a good start, it's a good season. Is it 30 games? Is it 40? Is it Memorial Day? When do you look at it? Sparky always said 40 games, right, Greg? So I guess uh, on some That's because he won 35. Uh, that's because he won 35 of them one year, I think. That's why. That's right. Well, 35 and 5 was pretty good. So I, I'm uh, maybe I'm a little pre-programmed to, to think about 40 games. But I, I, I think it's usually a pretty good measure. You saw last year, I'll mention the Astros. Uh, I can't recall exactly what the number was in, in terms of what their rough star was. They almost made it back from it. But to your point, it was just too big of a hole. They played very good baseball really from about, uh, I believe, June 1 on to the end of the year, maybe even mid-May. But, but uh, in that division, uh, it, was just, it was just too much. Just and to so help I you, they really were, they were seven, they, John, they were 7-17 and 17 in April, so you nailed exactly. it. They were terrible. And that's what it was. The Astros, it just stung them last year, and then they were a very good ball club. They were, they were a good ball club the previous year. They were a good ball club really over the last five months last season, but just that, that one month, stung them. And, and so I think that, that w- when you look at a division that's as competitive as we expect the East to be, um, th- then I do think that the, the at least a respectable 500 April becomes paramount. That being said, I'll, I'll make this point. There's, there's been so much talk, Greg, about the Red Sox. And, and they're a popular pick. I've seen some Red Sox Cubs World Series picked. I've seen uh, plenty of people thinking that Boston's going to win uh, the league. I, I, I think there is a gap between the Indians and everybody else. And I think the Red Sox are part of the everybody else. They're not that 1A behind Cleveland. Cleveland, uh, look at their rotation, is so solid. Their bullpen, we saw it again yesterday with Miller and Allen. And their lineup, I think, w- with Brantley and Carnacion has a chance to be even better than it was last year. And Lindor just keeps getting better and better. The Indians, to me, are, are the class of the league until someone proves otherwise. And I, just, I don't see a team right now that's as good as what the Indians are, especially with Boston. You've got Price on the DL, Pomeranz on the DL, and Tyler Thornburg, who's supposed to be a key guy in that bullpen, on the DL as well. When you have that much quality pitching on the DL to start your season, it's going to really show up, I believe, early on in the year. So uh, I, I think Boston has, has some work to do. And, and I'm making that point because I, I, I think the East in general, guys, I don't see one team that's clearly better than everybody else. I, I think Boston has flaws. The Jays have flaws. Tampa impressed me certainly on, on Sunday when maybe some people thought they were going to be fifth place. So it, to me, it, it's, a, it's a division that I think is going to stay closer than maybe we have seen in, in many years in the past.